Hey, you're watching the Letterman podcast with Mike Chisholm, endorsed by the Hello Deli. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome once again to the Letterman Podcast. As always, my name is Mike Chisholm. As always, I'm excited to be here. And uh, today we start our anniversary week. So from this episode to the to the next Friday episode uh, and everything in between, we're talking about the anniversary of the Letterman Podcast. It's been a year. Um, April 20th of 2022 is when we uh, started this endeavor. We're there now, um, a year later. And uh, a lot of very cool things this last year uh you'd think that i'd be the type of guy that comes out and does a retrospective episode like i did in episode 30 uh and maybe we will uh but that's not what we have on the that'll be a bonus episode if we do because we've got a whole bunch of stuff in the can today uh starts anniversary week uh and three episodes are going to commemorate that and a contest and maybe some more stuff um so for those who don't know about the contest we've already got a video up uh, on the YouTubes and also on the Facebooks. Uh, if you want to be rejected by The Late Show with David Letterman, this is a rejection postcard. This is the one I use. It is beat up. I have a whole bunch of pristine ones and we're going to give a few of them away uh, this go around to see how this works. So if you want to get into the contest, uh, please join the Facebook group, the Letterman Podcast Facebook group. Find the post that has the video, the contest talking about it. If you like the post, you get an entry. If you share the post, you get an entry. And if you leave a comment on the post, you get an entry. So head to the Letterman Podcast Facebook group, join the group, share the group. Uh, and and um, yeah, you'll get uh, entered in. To, for a chance to win one of the official Late Show rejection postcards. Um, so how are we starting Anniversary Week? We're starting it with Mark Malkoff, and I'm very thrilled uh, to have him on, uh, of course. Um, I actually tell the story. I actually get a little bit vulnerable in this episode and tell, us, tell him the story about uh, with Shecky and all that, and I'm not sure if he was aware of that or not. Uh, one thing that I love about Mark um, is, is he is a constant source of encouragement to me. Uh, and this endeavor, this program here, um, and and after his ending his his amazing run on the Carson podcast, um, which just such brilliant, beautiful work, um, and and which of course bled over into Letterman stuff. Lots of good Letterman stuff on the Carson podcast, so it's still around. Check it out. Go look at the old episodes with people like Peter LaSalle, like Morty, like Bill Sheff, Some of these people that there's a good chance we'll never be able to get on this show. Mark has done that. So in many ways, the Carson podcast ending right as we were beginning. Uh, it was a kind of a bridge and they merge with each other, which I, which I adore. Um, uh, we asked Mark, we catch up with him. What's, what's he been doing since the Carson podcast? He talks about that. He's got a Carson project he's working on that he can't really talk about, but thank goodness, uh, you know, his life still gets to have some of that, um, that love that he has for, uh, for Johnny Carson and things like that. I I'm just very excited to have Mark back on. Um, you know what? I think I can probably cut the intro short here. Um, yeah, the, we are very proud to present the uh, beginning of oh our anniversary week. Yeah, next uh, on uh, we're gonna put a, a bonus episode on Tuesday uh, with Darren Cox where uh, we talk about Letterman collectibles, and that's gonna be definitely an offshoot podcast. Or there's maybe not an offshoot podcast, but we're gonna have more uh, collectors, Letterman uh, and company collectors out there. Some of the uh, the cool things that uh, are around. Darren certainly has a very cool memorabilia collection, um, and I'm I'm, I'm excited uh, to talk to him about that and also the U2 special uh we did a merge with Darren's podcast the irritable dad syndrome we did a um a, kind of a mashup episode and so I'm going to include um I'm going to include Darren's stuff uh that he and I did with the collector stuff and then I'm going to put on the extra 20 minutes or so of us talking about the the Dave U2 special so uh and then that's going to culminate next Friday uh, one week today with a very special episode. I'm not going to disclose who the guest is, but it's a good guest, a great guest. They're all great guests. This one here is one that um, we talk about the top five in the top five. So uh, very excited about that. And I'm not going to say anything else. Um, very, very excited to present uh, on our anniversary week. The Letterman podcast is proud to present the return of our boy, Mark Malkov. 
My man, I am so happy to have you back. I was just saying just before we uh, hit the record button that I'm actually not nearly as nervous this time as I was. You came back, you came on in episode five and it was a big deal for me. Uh, I, and I mean, there was, there's, there, you'll find, I'm going to tell you a story yeah. within this episode here before this conversation's over um, about why some of that nervousness was there and, and the regard I have for you. Mark, <laughs> how have you been? I've been okay, just working on a Carson project. Um, yeah, it's congrats on everybody you've gotten uh, oh. so far. Uh, the show, I mean, it could go on for, it seems like it could go on forever. Like yeah. the Carson podcast, I was limited with guests and stuff that are around still. And um, yeah, no, you're doing a great job. I love learning the new things. That's why I loved sitting down with Mort with Mort. I'm like, why yep. did Bill Wendell leave? Oh, why did Wendell leave? And like- oh. That yeah. was one of the best part. I yeah. love your Morton interview. I listened to that a couple of times. Oh, um, and, I, and I, just, I, I wish I could get R Morty. I wish I could get him. But I but think, at least, you know, you have had LaSalle. You have had Chef. Yeah. You have had some of these people that are getting more and more and more ungettable every day. The Wendell story was – the Wendell story about when he left, but also the, the, the flatulence story. Like, yeah, and then Don Giller put up, some, I think, videos of them referencing it on the NBC show. I, you know, it's one of those things where I just had the, just always the questions, and it's just a forum, it's just a place where to get my questions answered, yep. and then uh, it's a bonus that it's recorded and other people get to listen to it. So, uh, yeah, it definitely when I could get some of these things um answer was good and he Morty was really a, a fantastic guest and I had a good time with him he and I, he and I do chat and I've, I've actually mentioned this on the show he and I do chat he it's kind of like he plays me like a cat with a rubber mouse a little bit like and and it's fun uh he makes me laugh I make him laugh a little bit we've got a um radio legend Alex Bennett we've got a connection there between the two of them and, and so we talk about other things too real estate I, I like I want to talk to him about real estate you know if I want to talk to him about because he's you know California the of upper course now he's definitely he's done a lot in his life yeah um, like yeah, he's a fascinating guy, Morty is. And um Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad him and then like I got um two episodes I never aired um with Rick Shackman that I will at some point put up. So I probably have like um another at least like each one was like an hour and a half, I think, with Shacky. Because I didn't okay. want to get one, but I'm I mean, it just sucks so bad. That he passed away and he was very helpful to me we would talk on the phone um as um you know a lot of people um he was really good too and yeah. um i would like to put that stuff up but it's it's like just when anything like that happens especially you know he was not old at all no uh, it's just it's yeah it's a shock and it's a blow but um but i've I, I just been i find myself fortunate i've gotten to talk to these people how gurney I just was like sitting there in his home and I'm like, I, I can't believe that I'm here. Yes. I can't like, just because it's one of those things, like he's done. So he was with Jack Parr I mean, he been directing forever. Mm -hmm. And then he, I remember when he retired, um, when he left and Jerry Foley came in and that was a long time ago. So just the fact that I was able to sit down and he was receptive for me. Um, yeah, that meant a lot. I really enjoyed that. I uh, uh okay so so you're talking about Shecky here I might so well, I might as well just bring it up now oh, I'm gonna ask you the question so did you interview Rick just once and it was just really 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 long and you cut that into one episode is that how that worked or did you yeah. talk to him? okay yeah no that was just one episode and then we talked all this other and like I, there are a lot of people that I interview that won't that um I, they're like I want to tell you something but it's private I don't yeah. want it in the episode it's shocking. Like sometimes it'll be when we're done filming. It's normally when we're done recording. They're like, "Can I tell you something?" I'm like, "Tell me whatever you want." And they start just <laughs> yep. everything starts coming out that they don't feel, and rightfully so for in some cases that should be on there. And uh, definitely, Rick was one of those people. But there's certain people also, and I'm not going to mention. There's somebody else. Oh, somebody Letterman related that would just be like that, dropping these like things that. I was like, I can't believe you're saying this on the podcast. And they're like, um, well, you're not going to air put this in the podcast, or you'll edit this part out. I'm like, yes, I will. I, no, I will. I'll protect you. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, Rick was one of those people um, that would uh, do that. Um, I think 
I think that's the difference a little bit between um, what we're doing here and and Carson podcast because with Carson the Carson podcast, you know, we're we're so many years removed and we're talking about people who had passed away and 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 yeah. things like that. So some of those stories can be loosened up a little bit more. Where we're now with Letterman folk, the balance is wanting to make sure that you know we we're unabashedly wanting one of the things Rick loved about what we're doing here is that we want to keep it positive scandal and gossip can go live, you know, kind of somewhere else. We're going to focus on the anecdotes, the funny stories, uh, you know, if it made TV, it, it's fair game, but we're going to be as respectful as possible. Even if we're talking about things that might be potential, you know, landmines. I, I, and that was my philosophy. That's yours. It's one of those things where it's like, to me personally, when I have somebody on, it's their episode and yep. we'll talk about whatever they want to. Yep. Um, if they want to say things and they they want to keep it in and they're comfortable with it, I'll, I'll put it in unless it, like, I really think it's going to hurt the, that the guest or really another person. And I'll just make a judgment call. But um, a lot of times they're like, no, keep that in when something I wouldn't necessarily put it in. And it wasn't nothing scandalous, but they're definitely yeah. certain. And then there's certain guests rarely that will ask to listen beforehand um, and make some edit notes. And they're like, I misspoke here. Or like normally it's like, everything's great. You did a great job with the edit and making me look good and stuff like that. But I try to be respectful and you, you do the same thing. It's one of those things you give them a safe space Yep. And if something goes somewhere, like I, I almost every anything I feel like I could ask, it was if it was respectful in some way. I mean, there there's definitely are a lot of things I just I, I didn't actually feel like I could. But there were certain things that I thought might be a, a difficult conversation, but I was able to phrase it in a way and ask it in a polite way where people were normally very receptive uh, how I broached the subject and how I was with that. And I know you do the same. So. Yeah, well, the respect you use that word respect, and that's that's what it was. Um, you know, and we did. It is like like I know you and I are cut from the same cloth in the sense that we respect yeah. these people totally. The last thing we would ever want to do is yeah. for a little bit of short term gotcha type uh, yeah. type. To, you know, to 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 screw up anything yeah. else or other people to screw it up for them just to get a little. Like when Dreesen was on, and uh, how great of a guy is Tom Dreesen? Like, I'm like they're his like, wonderful. I was having a really tough time in my life a bunch of years ago, just down in the the dumps with everything. And I was in LA and he took me out. Um, I watched him with, with, he introduced me to Jamie Masada and I was hey, watching his set. And then we went next door to some deli or whatever. And it was just really great to me when I he's needed like, to hear it. He's like your favorite uncle. He's like meeting your favorite uncle. For yeah. The first time. I'm like, grateful. I saw yeah. he's doing it. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I just appreciate him. And, and, and so some of the things that he was saying in his episode like you could definitely go down a gotcha pathway because I mean, mm -hmm. and, and not just him, but anybody who is clearly, you know, cause some of these people are, 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 are kumbaya. Let's, we all want to get together. Yeah. Some people, of course, very, very voraciously on team Dave and, and, and uh protective, like a, like a guard dog. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, sometimes and so things take time. It takes time. I think sometimes, especially with my thing, with the cars and thing, I think it was just so many people participated slowly. It was just a build of like, of people on staff especially and they just like i'm sure with you too they listen to some episodes and like oh wow this it's what you're doing sincere it's authentic you're not you're true it's it's very obvious and i would like to think and um with my guest that said yes it was about it was the same pretty much the same i definitely a couple people didn't want to talk uh, some key people i wanted uh just didn't want to talk and aren't, weren't comfortable with it and like i get it there's it's always gonna happen and you respect it and yeah. What was Dave the uh, the number one guest that you never had that you wanted? Oh goodness, there were a hand, there were like three, and Dave was on one of them. I yeah. I, I I get it. I, oh, yeah. I mean, I he, I mean, I yeah, this would be a whole podcast episode talking about it. But um, I, I I understand. I mean, Carson was someone that was so near and dear to him, and I know Dave. It's not his favorite thing to talk about himself. Yeah, uh, especially like yeah, I mean. There's just so much stuff, uh, but uh, yeah, he was definitely in my top three. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I, that makes sense to me. Um, who, are, people, who, are, yeah. some, who are some of the other folks on the Carson podcast that you wanted very badly but didn't get? Are you able see? To... They're all people for the most part that are not public figures. They were worked on the Tonight Show for all, and they just had di a different perspective in terms of like famous people. I would have really liked Bette Midler and Dave Letterman. I think that those yeah. were the two. Yeah. Um, I mean, I tried Burt Reynolds the last bunches of years of his life and it's like, it's, it's what it is. I mean, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, there I mean, maybe those top three, but yeah, a lot of the times, and it's you too, a lot of the times the staffers are way better than than famous people. I mean, um and like just the people that knew him in other capacities with Carson, I found um is where the the best stuff was. Yeah. Oh, that's th those are the people that I uh, I love to talk to too. And and I think that's where the bonding with Rick came in. I might as well bring this up now and we can kind of, uh, so, so, Let's do it. well, okay. So there's a, there's a very famous, um, underappreciated radio guy. We had him on the podcast here. His name is Alex Bennett. He, he's, he was an influence of Howard Stern and, and, uh, and, and he and Shecky were best friends. So Alex, mm -hmm. this is where I got to know Shecky and, and the, the, the yeah. seeds of this, I, wished the Letterman podcast existed in the throes of the Carson podcast. I was a listener of the Carson podcast yeah. and I always wished the Letterman podcast existed. I, had I did too. Syndrome. I just didn't want to do it. I was too overwhelmed with Carson and people constantly <laughs> were like, do a Letterman podcast, do a Letterman podcast. And I'm just like, I, I don't have it. In. So I, mean, barely, I am barely st staying afloat <laughs> getting this thing out every week. Carson thing. Yep. I'm like, I can't do it. And, uh, but it definitely, it, I definitely thought about it and yep. stuff. So I'm so glad you're doing it. It just like it would have been something that I just would have loved, especially in my in my like tw my twenties. And um, I don't want to date myself, but like in thirties and stuff, because it's just like this just stuff wasn't attainable, like the information and just people. I mean, obviously he was still doing the show at the time. Yeah, but, um, you were in the throes of it at that point. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah, yeah. but. Uh... But anyway, so 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 when Shecky and I started to get to know each other a little yeah. bit, one of the things that he did to kind of, I think, vet me to make sure that I wasn't, you know, well, as Alex mm -hmm. says, you know, I wasn't loony. <laughs> that's, that's what Alex Bennett says. So so Alex Bennett does a panel show every week. He started it during uh, COVID um, yeah. and he's still got GabNet. Shout out to Alex Bennett. You're awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would go on every week and Shecky was on every week too. And so every oh. Monday uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern, yeah. I'm on this forum with yeah. a bunch of different panelists from all over the continent and including Rick Sheckman though. Yeah, and, and of course, that, yeah. you know, Letterman stories come out because sure. Alex loves yeah, yeah. Dave and, and, sure, and, and, and Shecky, you know, you couldn't talk to Shecky without hearing an amazing story about old Hollywood or, or, or in my yeah. case, as we got to be friends, comic books or, or just because sure. just he had, he had a brain. People talk about Don Giller's encyclopedia brain. Rick Sheckman, same deal. He was an encyclopedia. Yeah, and he so definitely anyway, is. Go ahead. He was accurate. There's so many people to give recollections. I found I have to do the thing, but Shecky was really spot on with yeah. um, with this remembering things from like decades ago, like with the detail and stuff. So yeah, and well, and so and he and I became friends over this time, mm -hmm. and 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 there was one episode, and I'm gonna go back and find it. I'm gonna go back on Alex's uh, on Gabnet, and I'm gonna actually yeah. find the episode um, where Shecky. This is where I gotta heap some praise on, on on you. Now, I was a listener, of course, I loved it. I wanted the Letterman podcast to exist, but I had this imposter syndrome. There's no way I could ever like. I, I had the same thing. Then, wouldn't even fathom that I, I could do the same that. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Um, but battling through that, there's no greater achievement when you can battle through imposter syndrome and actually start doing some of the yeah, things you love and dream of. It's and definitely going through uncomfortableness and and that 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 voice, at least like I'm sitting down with Stephen Wright, one of my first guests. And I, I, I emailed him and four hours later, we're actually, I didn't know he was in New York in the studio and I'm asking him questions. We're having a good connection, but in my head, I'm like, you have no business talking to him. Yes. Um, you're not an interviewer. You're not yes. anybody. And I just, so I had to work through that, but please get back to. to no, to no, 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 no. But, but this is, no, this yeah. is good. Cause really you and I are akin in this way in, in so many ways. And, and so anyway, we're, we're, we're doing the, the show and I think it's in the summertime. I, I recollect it being in the summertime. I'm in my, my home office. Um, and I, I, I can, I can picture it in my mind's eye and yeah. Rick goes like, we're just talking. And suddenly, Alex, I think Alex just would go to Rick every once in a while because they're best friends. If there was a lull in the conversation, he'd say, hey, Rick, so what's going on for you? And and uh, so he said that to him. And he's like, well, I got to go on this, I don't know, this Letterman podcast thing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is. And I'm sitting there panel. And I remember watching it back. I'm going to watch it back again. And I remember kind of having this sort of perma smile on my face as he said he's going on this Letterman podcast thing later in the day after this show finishes. And and I'm like, oh, and that perma smile is my dream shattering. I get it. I get it. It's like going, oh, okay. 
the Letterman podcast does exist somewhere, even though I've searched yeah. all over the sure, place. Of course, it. yeah. I, I I need to find it. I need to subscribe. Uh -huh. And so I even said to Rick, Rick, what, what show is this? Like you just, I think I said, yeah. you just described my dream job. Yeah. And Rick's like, Oh, I don't know. It's some sort of whatever. And anyway, and, and it's like, okay. And I'm like, all right, well, okay. And we finished the show and all this stuff. And a few hours later, it might've been, it might've even been the next morning. He messages me. Cause we, we, we yeah. talked a lot. Um, and he messages me and he says, Oh, by the way, it wasn't a Letterman podcast. I was I was on Malkov's Carson podcast. Yeah. And immediately my mind went, okay, stupid. You now know what it feels like to have this yeah. idea of this dream gone. And now this dream is back. What are you going to do yeah. about it? Yeah, that was, I'm glad that that happened and got you going. I, there were a bunch of people, um, some well-known people within the industry that um, met, called me and were like, I'm so jealous that you did this because I've always I like or at least had thought about it and stuff. Yep. And I just I it was timing. I didn't think it was gonna succeed more than like seven episodes and no one was gonna care. I didn't think there was anyone would would listen, certainly not yep. the numbers and stuff, and like that all these people would go on. It's one of those things where you just never know and you just I was fortunate just to to to, to jump in the water and just like I was uncomfortable for a long time I mean people were pretty um some of my listeners they're nice but they were definitely like you're interrupting too much and I was like okay fine so oh my god okay so there's a guy right now uh and I'm not going to mention his name but he works for he works for a senator in Washington DC and and I mean he's he's like he's a very very like he's, he's a very decorated guy when it comes to the world of professional politics who his initial reach out to me was, I don't want to go so far as to say it's venomous, but it was certainly concerned. He was like, listen, you are, you are this and this and this and this. I I'm so frustrated. I want to listen to this episode. I want to listen to this show every week. Cause it, cause it's of what it's about. But, and he, and he just went up and I just started going back and forth with him going, Hey man, I'm just, I'm stumbling forward. I'm just learning. Yeah. About. And now he and I are like, are like buddies. I'm and, glad. And, and it's yeah. so, um, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Constructive criticism is very, it's tough sometimes to hear, but it was the best thing that happened. And I just kept Absolutely. like that. And I would, it just, and then it, it was really, they, I, they would just get m more from the people. I mean, there's definitely times I would interject or I really, if, if it was something that was like necessary, I might, um, it might happen, but it was a, extremely rare. And getting those type of things rather than you, you suck explanation point. <laughs> E emails or like whatever but it is it's it's somebody like there's aren't a lot of people well um just that are willing in terms of like audiences and stuff just to be not good yeah. in a public forum yeah. in the at least in the beginning it took me a long time and um yeah people would be like wow you're so much better than you were I'm like I know <laughs> I was not didn't know what I was doing and I was like raining it in a little bit um but yeah the, the constructive criticism you can get an audience of of people that are actually have good notes and you get more than one and they're saying and stuff like there's one of my favorite podcasts where they just interrupt too much and I'm just like yeah uh, and it's just what it is and like there it's yeah I, I still enjoy it but I'm just like like I don't yeah. even know if they're really aware of it but um it's just what it is well, for sure. And there's a learning curve and you get used to it and, and all these things. And, yeah. and I, I can say the same thing. Like I went back and I listened, you came on episode five of, uh -huh. of, of this show. And so, yeah. and we're now shooting, I think it's episode 60. Uh, yeah. This is be the 60th one. Wow. Um, and, and, and I, I, Oh, I'm one of the, it's one of those things where you hate listening to yourself, but you got to listen to yourself for a variety. I of know reasons. we're like the two people where it's like, when I listen to my voice, when it sounds, I don't get freak, freaked out or it's not weird because of all of this, but like, I can't tell you how many people that I'm, I keep forgetting that people aren't used to that. And when they, I've been around them, they're like, do I really sound like that? I'm like, <laughs> I know what I sound like. I don't, yeah. I wish I didn't have to, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very rare that people probably know what they sound like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so listening to uh, our first exchange and I can, I, you know, definitely there were hallmark moments where it's like, okay, I've gotten better there. I've gotten better there. I've gotten better there. Absolutely. Mark just, bailed me out there. Thank God. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and so it's fun. The progression is fun and having, yeah. you know, guests on a second, third, fourth time, uh, which is what we want to do. I mean, we want to keep going. I want to have, I want to have O'Donnell on. I mean, episode, I think uh, you could be endless times. people. I mean, yeah. I, 
Yeah, I mean, just the fact that you have NBC and CBS and that people are like, so many of the people are still around. I mean, yep. um, yeah, I, I think it's great. And just how many people that it didn't even go on Dave's show necessarily revere him and want to talk about him and just like Neil Brennan is a really funny comic. Um, yes. Oh God, he, I'd love to interview him. How how awesome was Blocks? Was the was Letterman's appearance on his? Yeah, podcast? yeah, yeah. It, it was one of those things though that I remember like the final CBS show that Neil Brennan was tweeted that he was just crying through the montage and like that. That I I could totally when he said that I'm like like I get it. Yep. Yeah, the, um, and I he's one of those people that um didn't I don't think he went on the show. Perhaps he did. I don't think he did on the CBS show. Um, no, he might have been in Chappelle's Entourage one night or something like that. Yeah. Or something. But yeah, um, I don't think but, he performed. But it's one of those things just to talk to some somebody who's a really, um, really unique comic voice and stuff that's been really successful and be able to talk about, um, like Judd Apatow never went on NBC. He went on CBS, I think, once. But yep. still, I mean... He, do a whole podcast about habit how talking about dave and oh he's on my dream list oh so so yeah. i've got a bunch of different dream lists and one of the categories sure. is uh celebrities who have either been on the show or are attached to the show like like yeah. a dream moment i would love to have sandler on here and have him play his letterman song i, I would love that like that yeah, would you be never know it's good to, i always say it's good to think big you never know and think oh. In, and Apatow like, Ap, Ap, would be a mere Apatow would be amazing um, because, you know, of, of, of his history of how he would do exactly what you and I yeah. have done is, is, is he would just go and approach yeah. these people like as a, as a quote unquote, you know, unknown and, and, and he talk would. to them about things and they would open up and talk about all yeah. these things. And then he ended up working with some of them. And, and, and yeah, it's very, and, the story is unbelievable here in those tapes, but he's definitely, one of those people like Neil Brennan, like so many of us that are just like, Norm MacDonald. I mean, I think you oh. probably know this. I mean, I was fortunate. I got to meet him a bunch of times and we we texted um, like the last year, like near, like maybe a year or two before we died, we would text how much he revered Dave. He would all, he told me, he's like, you go on Conan and I just wing it, but you go on Dave and you know, it's like, it's Letterman. You oh, have yeah. to prepare yeah. and like, get so much re respect um, for him. There's just certain people, um, yeah, I know another. There's another famous person that somebody told me I can't mention. Really, really famous comic that was crying during the montage, the Dave thing, who'd been on the show a bunch. And it's just, yeah, there's a, it just means so much to people. So I'm glad you're doing this. And it's like, uh, I think a lot of people are going to want to talk to you just because they don't get the outlet to talk about this this thing. Oh, I've had those. And and I've got a couple in the background who won't come on the show. But uh, like, well, Shecky was one of those two guys, too. Uh, you know, he, he he on on one of his very last appearances on Alex's show, I think his second yeah. to last one. He yeah. even says it. I, I do a tribute, uh, a Shecky tribute episode. And in it at the beginning of it, it's a clip of him. And he even says it on camera. He's like, oh, I'll tell all these stories to Chisholm, but I'll never go on <laughs> and do one of the one of these uh, staff favorite moments because his favorite moments are ones that could never be on the favorite yeah. moments they couldn't yeah, do it he, like, he, yeah he, he opened up to me on a bunch of things that yeah. i just couldn't put out that he didn't want put out and yeah um it was a very different era um yes. when they were doing oh, the yeah. nbc show uh but yeah so he so he was never a guest with you no and 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 it was funny i had one i can't okay. believe that so the day before this is okay. This is weird. Um, I was one of the last people to talk to him. And and, and the yeah. reason was he was about to go on a cruise. Um, and, and, uh, so I had Jeff Martin, um, and Jerry Mulligan on at the sure. same time. And, and one of the, the way that I knew that I would get Checky, and this is true. If he would have, you know, if he'd still be right. around, yeah. eventually I would have had him on the show, but the way I would have had him on the show is not as a guest. Uh -huh. I was going to have him be a zoom bomber, uh, you know, having two oh, people I say. that he loved. Yeah. And then suddenly, Oh, Hey, look, everybody, it's Rick Sheckman yeah. and check shows up. And, yeah. and, and then they could all just have some fun reuniting or yeah. whatever. And I actually, uh, 20 yeah. minutes. So, so, so he was hospitalized on the Wednesday. So mm -hmm. Tuesday, mm -hmm. I talked to him on the phone about 20 minutes before Martin and Mulligan showed up and I yeah. gave him the option and he was like, yeah, maybe I will. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, send me the link just in case yeah. I'm still yeah. prepping for the trip. And I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, and, yeah. and, and, and he wasn't, he, you know, he wasn't feeling great, but 
he was hoping to go to Florida and the Florida sun would help yeah. things. And, and unfortunately got hospitalized, but, but that was the way that I was going to get Shecky. I was going to get him on yeah, by smart. jumping in uh, with other people. I, I see. I, I did my Carson podcast was like seven years in or something like that. And so many of Dave people had talked and yep. he had listened to my podcast. Yeah. Um, I didn't know he was a regular listener when anybody in the industry and I hear from people I'm just like, really? I'm like, that's so nice. It's a huge compliment. So I think maybe that's how um, he was, I was able to to, uh, to get him and stuff. But I mean, I'm just glad you got to know the guy. I was privileged. I mean, I met him when I worked at the show. Uh, he gave me a dub of, uh, it was, was it Christmas with the Lettermans? No, that was later. He did give me a Christmas with the Lettermans, which was one of my favorite episodes. I wanted Dave's last show, which this is back pre-YouTube and stuff. Oh, yeah. I got yeah. the June 20... June uh, 25th, um, 93, and then it got Christmas with the Lettermans. And uh, yeah, Christmas Christmas with the Lettermans, too tired to do the show. <laughs> Those are two of my favorite um, episodes yep. um, on NBC and stuff. So, I mean, he was great. And it was just fun talking to somebody that like could speak my language and like answer questions and stuff. Like um, he was there, like talking about the Universal Amphitheater when they did like the anniversary stuff, and yep. um, yeah, that's like one of my favorite clips, which they ended on um the last on NBC with Dave riding out on the horse and stuff, yep. and yeah, that was that's one of my favorite moments too. Yeah. Well, and I, I think I even said uh, Alex said, well, you know, um, why won't you ever do one of those segment things? And and I I kind of piped in because Shecky knows where all the bodies are buried. Um, he 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 was, you know, he knows all that all the stuff. Yeah. That, you know, and it is a different era and all these things. But the thing that's one of the things I love about Shecky is you ask him, um, you know. Uh, you know what was if you had a secret to your longevity or 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 why was it why did you make no ripples there ah, i stayed in my lane like he didn't want to take credit yeah. for things he didn't want to but like here's the here's, he's the guy that told dave that bill hicks passed um you know like I didn't alex know that. I didn't yeah so that. so bill hicks yeah. um when he when he passed yeah, alex bennett who's at that point in san francisco yeah. that, okay so sorry uh, i'll go back uh, Bill Hicks gets cut from the show the next day he's on Alex Bennett's radio show yeah the, the next day okay so fast forward eight months or whatever it is Alex calls up Rick and says hey uh, did you hear about Bill Hicks and Rick goes oh what did he do now and yeah you know yeah. He, he passed oh my god and, yeah. and Rick's the guy that went and told Dave and Morty about it. like but Rick never broadcast that stuff sure he, he wasn't the guy that would you know, so, yeah. oh, I was the guy who, you know. Yeah, that's, that's glory for I mean, like, yeah, that whole really thing was so hard because Dave was like number one and just being, he was just being really careful with his, the, the show and stuff and like wanted to stay number one. And it was nice that he had his mom on and they showed it and totally look at it a decade and a half later or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, Dave, I think even said, like, why, it's like, why didn't we broadcast this? I mean, yeah. But um, but yeah, that's interesting with with Shaggy. He um, he kept everything. I think yeah. like the show he had. I mean, I have a first script I can show you from like late, late night. Um, the first at from February eighty two. The first, and he, I know Shaggy had had one as well. And like oh, he had one signed. He had, he had one signed by Dave, and I think maybe Dave and Meryl. Wow. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. If I, I yeah, I have only right now is Hal Gurney signed it for me. I had Hal sign up. Only but, um, Hal. You have well, right no, but I'm saying if like I ran into or like something and it was appropriate, um, it'd be fun to get some of the other peeps um yeah. to to uh put their name on it if they're okay with it. But um yeah, that to me was like one of my favorite things. And I got it from I guess I can say his name. A gentleman by the name of Bill Shortridge. Bill Shortridge was yeah. uh, on NBC and he um shout out to Bill he's a member of our uh, of our uh the Letterman podcast community shout out to Bill oh good yeah Bill um I was just so excited to be able to get that and uh yeah Bill was really cool uh and yeah just the fact that he got to be there for those years yeah uh hey uh do you have it with you do you have it right beside you I do I have a few things it's like I've been working really hard on some projects and stuff and I haven't I wasn't I have too much stuff. I've gotten rid of a lot. I actually gave Don Giller a lot of my stuff that I just, I'm like, I like scripts like this of late night and or, or late show I gave. I have some still, 
but I gave a bunch um to them. But yeah, this is the first one. Wow. Um, this was yeah, show number one. It says we're looking better late night. How one man, how one me. vision. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those things where, yeah, you just never who knew. Um, I'm just glad that um that I was able to get this. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Hal Look Gurney. Hal Gurney signed, I think, my CBS. I had the first episode ever from CBS too. I don't have it here. I think I might have like um I was like money problems and might have sold it on eBay or something a couple <laughs> years ago. But he signed it Hal Gertner. Well, okay. So actually, uh This Don, is Gurney. This is Gurney though. Don just chimed in. Uh Christmas with the Letterman's was the very first Hal Gertner. So that was the first time Hal Gertner ever uh oh, wow. And for those who know, every once in a while in the cast, um, they would call director Hal Gurney. They would call him Hal Gertner. Um, it was, it was, Hal is great. I really love talking to him. I don't know if it, I think it made the episode of some of his stuff. This is something that Don has never seen before. So I'm like, that is bizarre. This is when I worked at the show when they gave us our, for the, the holidays, they gave us the pant jackets. My year was like the, it was like yellow and blue. It was like. I don't want to date myself, but I will. It was like 98. Yep. Uh, that December. And they gave us um, a worldwide pants coin. Oh, that's awesome. And I will tell you what it says. So like this is, says the Late Late Show, Everybody Loves Raymond, uh, the Late Show. And then it's a flag and a heart with the Roman, Roman numeral five. Because, oh, I guess it was day <sighs> fifth season. And then this is, is just, uh, yeah, a worldwide pants incorporated thing. So... That um, was fantastic. Yeah, for really Don, not to, for Don. I'm like, wow. I, yeah. So I got that. That was a long time ago. Um, I gave Don a lot of stuff, but like, um, I have like, um, somebody I was able to get like a contact sheet of Dave from NBC doing stuff and stuff. And oh. like, oh, this is just him with a golf like putting and stuff. Probably for something they were going to do on the mailbag. So, and I have one with him and Paul as well framed from yep. the, the late night show. So I, I really do. Um, I do like that. I don't know if I have anything else on me. Like I definitely have like rundown from, from NBC and rundowns from CB. I had one round, one rundown that I, I remembered that um Dave was had his heart issues and Junior Garofalo guest hosted. And yeah, uh, I got Bob Odenkirk, Bob Odenkirk before he was really famous and David Cross because I was such a big Mr. Show fan. Yep. And the airlock afterwards signed it for me. They were nice that I could be there for backstage for some of that. I never I don't think I ever asked, but they were like. But yeah, they were nice for, for that. And Zach Galifianakis network television debut, which really catapulted him. Yeah. Um, I was there for that. But I, and my point is, is I have all this stuff. I probably have this a stack of this many tickets, CBS tickets from when I worked there, like um, that that were left over because yeah, well, you I, said you people know, would I send them back. There, people yeah. would yeah, like I mean they would they were just there. So I have a lot of those. Um, I have the holiday party invite somewhere, which was I think was like. It was either the last or second to last that Dave actually went to the holiday party. Yeah. Um, I believe so. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much what I have. I, I definitely got rid of some stuff. Like I had a Rolling Stone magazine when Dave makes the, this face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. NBC. Yep. Well, like, and I'm not faulting this person for it, but like, when I'd go to the NBC show, there'd be somebody that worked for Dave who would be like, does anyone, want, if somebody has something signed, you want Dave to sign this afterwards? And I was like, oh my goodness, that'd be amazing. And then uh, afterwards, this person would come back, oh, Dave signed after show, come back and hand it. And it was like, I don't, my instinct is like, I don't think this is Dave's signature. And it it, it, it was, and I, I got rid of it. It's, I, I yep. get it. It's like, it's what it is. But then I found out for sure that this individual would be, signing dave's name on stuff and it was like i got a book a letterman a book also like one of the top 10 lists and it was like it was highly personalized to, yep. to me and stuff like now mark this is this book cannot be returned or or something like this and i'm like i don't think dave after the show would take <laughs> that time to write like two sentences well and, and zinnemann i mean that's how zinnemann opens his book opens he he had this canned ham for years and years and years that he thought was signed by Dave, you know, the staff after the show gives it to the staff and the staffer goes to get it signed. It comes back. And I mean, actually that was one of the first things that Shecky did. Um, so yeah. 
I've got something else I'm going to show you. Don just sent something, but uh, yeah. so there's my there's my night, my picture. But now I've got two of them signed. Wow, uh, you know, to Mike, nice sure. to see David Letterman, and the other one is sure. to Mike, my best friend, David yeah. Letterman. Shecky immediately that got signed in California yeah. a few months ago, or well, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Ago. So Shecky immediately messaged the right people to say, hey, did Dave actually sign that or did what's her name sign it? And uh, she nope. wasn't there. She doesn't work for so him. Anymore. Before, OK, OK. So this is OK. Anyway, I'm just talking about the NBC. Oh, the, you did. Oh, he did it at CBS. The person that was, would sign his stuff at NBC was there for CBS for a lot of the gotcha. it was there. And, um, it's what said, it is. The, the person, by the way, this. the person is very, was very nice to me um, when I worked there. Um, oh, that's a curling rock from Nagano. Wow. Da Don that's just sent cool. me that. That's very, very cool. And that's um, either on his desktop or somebody else's. I assume it's his. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me see if I have something. Hold on. You, um, I'll be right back. Let me see yeah, no I problem. I, so so we just had Darren Cox on. Uh, I don't know if it's going to air before or after this episode airs, but we did an entire collectibles um uh, you know, for, for, for public, but he worked for a CBS affiliate. And so he's got these CBS yeah. catalogs and all these other things. What yeah. were you looking for? I was looking for a photo I had with Dave that he signed. That was really fun. It's, but I can't find it. It's probably put in it, he, the inscription was fun. I mean, I thought it was, I don't really want <laughs> to say what it said, but I'll tell you afterwards, but um, okay. Okay. It's PG oh. for sure. It's nothing. But it was like kind of embarrassing what he wrote, I thought, at the time. Um, it's for me. But um, no, I always, it was one of those things I got it. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then before I worked there and then Biff had saw it then and was like, oh, my goodness, you got this? And I'm like, I'm like, Biff, you work with the guy. And it, it was one of those things I think, is it Art Kelly is like, I never got yeah. a photo with him. I worked on the show. I right. saw him every day. It's Exactly. And it, it was like the employees, people don't realize that the staffers that even weren't there would have loved the chance to do that. And so many of them, some did, some sure. absolutely did, but a lot of them just didn't have the opportunity or just didn't feel that they could, but they wanted to. So Don just sent uh, Late Show 1000 Watch as well. Wow. That's kind of fun. That's yeah, there's fun. some fun stuff that they would put out. I'll um, tell you, the, I'll tell you one of my favorite things. I, my jackets are probably like my most coveted, yeah. the things that I love sure. the most. But I'll tell you, this thing here, I love that that book. That book is uh, yeah. the Late Show Twenty. Like that is, yeah, yeah. I'll like if, it, I'm in a, rare. if I'm in a sad mood or a bad mood or whatever, I flip yeah. through that for ten I'm minutes glad. and suddenly I'm. Yeah, it's super rare. I, yeah. I love that. It's just, it's made yeah. with, it's like my wife cooks. It's made with love. Like you can yeah. tell the care, the care that was taken in that book. We talked to, um, do you ever talk to George Schweitzer? The, the, um, I know who he is. is but yeah. No. So we had him on the show and, um, he and I talked about the thing I loved about CBS is how much they cared about, no matter what was going on, no matter what was going on, how much they cared about Dave. I, oh, I, I, I mean, it was beyond. I mean, yeah. it was it was something that I I don't know why I didn't realize and stuff. And the fact that that so many of the people would tell me that were there that they were just there for Dave out of out of loyalty. And it doesn't help. It, it helps also getting the vacation time, paid vacation, and health insurance. But like the loyalty to that guy and the love for that guy, I don't. There's no way he he. I don't think he 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 could process that or ever understand that or probably even know it yeah uh, when it would while it was going on yeah, yeah. he uh, i appreciated that very 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 much like they had his back to the point where he could still be if he wanted to still be doing that show he could still be doing that show like they yeah. would he was a legend they knew they had a legend they yeah. had a legend every episode that he did was another episode longer that the lineage would last yeah. into the broadcasting yeah. history which still is very um they care about that they care about the history and the, uh, of, of mm -hmm. that network and I, I i do appreciate that so much yeah. um about cbs um d you've had meryl on right no she's been very helpful recently we emailed i had a, a bunch of questions um about um yeah, about Dave doing Carson show back in the day and stuff. And when Dave would guest host and stuff, and she was very helpful. I've never met her. It would be great to meet her at some time. We have mutual friends and stuff. But um, yeah, have you had her on? Not yet. Yeah. She's on my, she's, uh, she is probably, 
like if you had asked me who I'd rather have on the show, Dave or Merrill, it would almost mm-hmm. be a coin flip. Like mm-hmm. I, I love yeah. the She mind. doesn't get enough credit. And the fact that oh. she wasn't, the fact that like if it happened now and she did something like that, and NBC or somebody would give her like, like they pour like Netflix, like $40 million deal for her to be, to be develop shows and to, uh, to do things. It just, I mean, for what she attributed to comedy in general in that show. Yep. I mean, I loved when she was on, didn't she, wasn't she, she was on the correspondent on Michael Moore's TV nation, I think for a while. I think that's what it was. Yeah. 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 I I loved when she would ever do anything, but just, um, yeah, I, I mean, she's still hilarious. I mean, she's still Meryl. It would be amazing if somebody just handed her some money to make something. Uh, when Zinneman was on the show here, he he, uh, he he made me unbelievably envious in a, in a positive way. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't get jealous of people. I just I get excited for them, but it's like, oh, yeah. I'd love to be there. She loves. Uh, they they bonded over. Uh, they've bonded over like reality dating shows. So mm-hmm. like when a new season of Love Is Blind comes out, the two of them will just go back and forth. Uh, like oh can you believe this person did that or whatever and i can only imagine doing that with the mind of Meryl like the things that would pop back yeah you know the responses would be just so really she's she's hilarious and uh (laughs) yet i I told her that one of dave's carson appearances um they showed a clip and they showed um it was I think it was dog poetry and that was Merrill's thing. And Dave gave her attribution after and it did really well with the audience. It was a tape piece with the dogs and stuff. I forget what the poem was. And then it was like, and then Dave afterwards was like, you know, that was um, written or or conceived by Merrill Marco. And And it makes sense. Um, I want to ask, actually, there's a Carson question here uh, with what we're talking about. Well, no, it's, it's, it's so good because you and Morty, when Morty was on your, on, 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 uh, on your show, you guys talked about, and I think in other episodes too, you've talked about when Carson saw the momentum of everything that was going on with Dave and how it was happening and, and how they deconstructed and the behind the scenes stuff yeah. and how Carson would start to kind of uh, yeah. homage some of that stuff. And it was kind of painful a little bit. But Most of it was not good. Right. But there's one that was amazing because mm-hmm. it had to do with Dave. And it was when Dave's oh, truck shows say. up. Dave's sure. truck shows up. And then and then after yeah. that, then the Wapner stuff. And and, and that, that was, was amazing television. Exactly. I mean, you Very don't... Letterman, but it was yeah. also Carson. Like it was it was yeah. it was a good way for Carson to do yeah. what Dave was doing. And Dave, I mean, I, I no one is gonna know for sure except Dave, but I I from people I talked on the t- on the tension of the word there, Dave had no clue. And for for for, tell, for that to happen on a late show yep. net show now, yep. I mean, Jimmy Kimmel and Krasinski and Emily Blunt or Blunt were really funny with their their uh, practical jokes when they lived next to each other and stuff. Yep. But I don't know how much it was if they tipped each other off or whatever. Um, so Kimmel is actually very can be very good at that. But yep. um, yeah, that was um, that was a great thing. And I remember on the Johnny tribute show when I was there, um, in the audience at the very, 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 very back of the uh, David K. Thank you <laughs> on um, the folded chair. Yeah, well, they weren't yep. supposed to let people in that had ever um, worked on the show because Dave. Uh, it just might throw Dave off, which I, I get. Yep. Um, but yeah, I remember Johnny, uh, uh, Dave showing the Johnny clip of the 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 truck. Yeah, um, and, and and the fact that like that story, like that it, in itself that episode and then the Wapner thing after and all of these things that happened. Oh, it was wonderful. The the truck itself. Here's the, here's the Merrill thing. I want to go back to for a second. One of the things that Merrill loved to do to Dave was surprise him. And as much as he hated the surprise. He didn't like surprises on air. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, It wasn't his thing. Knock that shit off. Right. But, but, she loved that and i and what a genius of course because uh, you know d- is there anybody on the planet that responds better off the cuff to whatever is thrown yeah. at him and so yeah. let's throw him a surprise and see how he responds yeah. um and so i wanted to know if that moment of the truck you kind of half answered that question already was it a surprise and did meryl have anything to do with that like like yeah. like because even on late show you know, you think about Lyle the intern, or 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 some of these other yeah. spontaneous moments with Tony, or or whatever yeah. that seemed like they were surprising Dave, even though they weren't. They weren't, yeah. But did Meryl? Did Meryl tell you that she she was involved in it? Well, no. I'm asking. I'm I'm wanting to know. I don't know. I, I should ask her. her. I'm I'm curious to know. Um, yeah. If that is true, I, yeah, I should. I don't know her. if it now was. I want to know the question that I have. And yeah, and, I'm and, not sure. 
I do want to say the one thing that Carson did have um, in terms of like a Dave moment was the Rickles thing going across the hall and like that never happened on tell. Like, I don't like to my knowledge on a late night show, something like that. But it it, it seemed like when they were like, let's let's go outside the studio and somebody's out there playing the piano and or like, I don't know, they did a bunch of things like where uh, Dave type stuff like. If, like they put signs up in a Disney a Disney World bathroom, like call this number at this date at this time, and um, it just didn't work. Peter Lasalle would has gone on record too that they didn't, it just didn't work. And <laughs> it's just tough though, right? Because Dave was getting really all the acclaim from the critics. Johnny wrote at, read everything that was about his show. Um, if it was a competitor, like he wasn't a competitor, but definitely it was just I, I know it had to have been um a little tough uh, well when your protege starts to outshine you there's a special unique feeling to that it's like going back to your high school reunion after 10 years you know it's 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 a, it's a unique feeling that only in that moment yeah. you can feel that feeling and and for johnny to see dave you know blow up the way that he did and then yeah. to see it turn into, you know, Carter, we talk about Carter the, with the, the whole late shift stuff, like, and yeah. there wasn't anything in entertainment that was being talked about more than that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, um, oh, okay. Don just said, by the way, uh, regarding the contact sheet that, that you gave yeah. Don, yeah. uh, the shots were taken by Bill Shortridge. So there we go. Oh, uh, that's nice. amazing. And, oh, that's, I did, I did not know. Uh, that, Power of the Giller, right there. Um, but but no, the cars like I I I I love Johnny's legacy for what it was. I yeah. also love again. I use the Godfather uh, analogy far 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 too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, um, Don Corleone, Michael Corleone, <laughs> like mm-hmm. you know. And then you love. I love what Dave has done since then. I love the fact that I think. And I, if, if I had him on, I would ask him, uh, if I had Dave on to ask a Carson question, one of the questions would be, okay, so you know how Carson finished things off. He basically okay. finished things off on your show, okay. uh, a benefit here maybe or, or something after that. But basically his last, his exclamation yeah. point on his career was being on Dave's show. Yeah. Um, when you retired from Late Show, and this is mm-hmm. what we have to say, we got to stop saying Dave retired because he certainly didn't retire. That's he true. Yeah, from he, Late Show. He and did. he went the exact opposite way true. that Carson went. It's he true. Kept going and is still yeah. relevant to this day. Yeah. And I want to know if he saw Carson's last years and we hear about the last time on the boat and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I want to know if, if, if he, saw that was what Johnny did and said, no, I don't want that. I so I'm intentionally I, not going to do that. I thought I read something that Dave said something similar to that, that just Johnny, it took something out of him just not being, you know, doing stuff and active and he could see that. Um, I, I could be off on that. No, there's so many questions um, that I'd have for, for um, that guy, but that's an excellent question. I mean, Dave, um, Dave, Johnny loved Dave. Dave, um, was loyal to the end yes with him. I, I mean i think i mentioned this to you maybe the last time or not but i've mentioned it like tom snyder uh was not thrilled um i think she he was on the cbs show the late late show talking about that he wasn't thrilled that johnny carson and would have all of those years never said stay tuned for tom snyder up next and i say back in 11 and a half whatever 10 years of dave carson to my knowledge never said and wait um, and stay up for Dave Letterman. I mean, Don no. might have something different, but he was just very, Dave um, Carson was very competitive. Even I think I've made the point that the first late show Carson, and he did this with Snyder, he, w- he would not make sure he was not hosting that week. There'd yep. be guest hosts. And uh, yeah, I mean, that less people are going to be tuning in. It's just, it's what it is, but um, yeah. There's another uh, era that doesn't get talked about enough, and I want to—I—I I, I don't know who the perfect person to talk about uh, mm-hmm. this with. I know I'm certainly, if I ever have a chance to talk to Morty, I'm certainly going to ask him about it. But yeah. um, there, there, there was a time where where mm-hmm. Jay Leno was David Letterman's lead-in, and 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 I think yeah. about I think about the uncomfort, the level of either discomfort or apathy yeah. or whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it, um, that that that. There was a time, and we don't talk about it. It's not even a, yeah. even in late shift, and war for late night, which I think are the two, you know, most complete, uh, yeah, you know, you know, records of this. 
it's kind of almost glossed over where there was a time, I don't know, it was nine months or 10 months, however long it, it was. was something that was, it was, I guess Leno took over May 25th, I believe, 92. And then, um, and then Dave, um, yeah, didn't leave until then the June like a year later, 25th, 93. Yeah. Yeah. There was some time. I, I, you know, I've heard conflicting things that they were still on good terms at that point. I have no idea. And I, it's but yeah they definitely I don't know how much communication they had Dave had a contract and he had no other at that point concrete he didn't ever even like went out to see like what who would be interested and and finished up really really strong on that show uh yeah. but yeah that that's true they were on back to back for yeah and 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 literally Jay would be like Stay tuned for it. But that was also during the time where they basically stricken that period of the Tonight Show from the record, um, you know, because it was during the Kushnik time. Yeah, right? and so, I, and so it was before the new beginning of the show and and, and all of that. So, uh, you know, because because as as Jay, they, they've talked about this. Uh, well, Bill certainly talked about it in his mm -hmm. book. But but, you know, we're going to basically restart the show from this point once Helen left. And they basically looked at it like and it was a new era. I, and so. Yeah, I talked to some, I don't want to mention who, but I talked to somebody um, that was related to Leno's um, show um, and I, it, it, from the, about the about their first year. And I was just like, I'm like I can't, like, because somebody was saying about how Conan, you know, just his show wasn't great the first 10 months. And I'm like, yeah, it was your show. It was not, it did not have its voice. I'm like, look at the first Leno's Tonight Show um, the economist at the end of the show. I mean, it, it, the show was just not there. Yes, Jay was doing, I think, did the first two weeks live, which is is very cool and just, yeah, yep. that didn't happen much. But it, it took him a long time. It, they didn't find the voice until he went to 8H. She did the week in New York and I was there. I saw it with my own eyes and then they went back and Studio 3 and then just yep. 8H'd it with a lot of the setup and that's when they succeeded wildly. Yep. They had way more time than whatever Conan was given. It wasn't even close. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, and, and that was always the, that was always the, the in 2010, uh, when the second, you know, when the second late shift happened, that was yeah. always, um, you know, the vocal minority, uh, yeah. idea was that, you know, and, and I mean, I don't even think Conan stood up for himself the way that, he he could have. I love the letter that he wrote. It was amazing. Yeah, um, but that was basically that was the end. Point. That was like the end. I mean, him yeah. writing that letter and everybody like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" Yeah. Um. And also, just the fact, like, I know Johnny Carson. I've read some of his contracts. The real estate was like the show must start at eleven thirty. Carson, when he, and, and even in the um, NBC years, when he got more clout, um, not NBC, but in New York, yeah. in like 60s, with like, this football game is going to go over my show. I'm not doing the show. My contract says it has to be from 1130 to one o'clock. And I, if not, I'm not going to do the show. Yep. And uh, just the fact that that was overlooked with Conan's contract. Uh, apparently, that, that's what I think. Yeah, that's what it said in the, that book. Yeah, they, you get the Tonight uh, Show. We'll run it whenever we want to run it. And he's like, yeah. what's well, crap? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was definitely, I think Bob Morden might have been one of the ones like, you didn't get that in the contract? That was yeah. like the, the lunch or something with maybe Jeff Ross because they were good friends. Uh, I don't know if they, how good, but um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, just to you talk to Jeff Ross? You've talked to Jeff Ross, haven't you? I've met him. I mean, I used yeah. to go to that show the, the first Two years of Conan when they had empty seats and nobody liked him. I'm telling you, I know he's. It's, it was. It was in terms of like the, the 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 public and stuff. Yeah, I went. I would see Jeff Ross all the time. He'd be on set and then um, seen him around. But yeah, I didn't talk. I didn't really get to meet him. I don't think till Rick Ludwin's memorial. And um, somebody introduced me. I didn't even go up to him. Somebody introduced me to him and we talked. And he was really cool, nice guy. Yeah. Um... Are, are you gonna go to Shecky's memorial? I haven't been invited. Um, I know Don Don Giller said that there's they're doing something. I mean, I yeah. have no idea. I, it's one of those things like, you know, that that was really like Nick Bernstein, who um worked under Rick, invited me to the memorial, and I was like, oh wow, that's so nice of you, uh, to do that. But I don't, I certainly never expect anything. And if I'm, yeah, I haven't been invited, and that's fine. I I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's one I of. I think those. I'm gonna fly out for it, so I hope. I hope, I hope there are so many people 
that he was friends with that he touched and it's like um yeah you knew him way more than i did we have talked on the phone and stuff and all these orbits know, right like but when yeah. leonard malton comes out and says something about like yeah they uh, were close yeah they're friends yeah. it's yeah. just what it is but that's great that they're doing something uh as yeah this this as i think that they should so no, I uh, anyway, I didn't mean to railroad back, but to uh, Rick Ludwin, you were you were at Rick Ludwin's memorial. Like, there's a guy who seems to be as as cons- like because he had so many sides pulling at him in so many directions, still universally. I mean, exceptions of course, but universally loved in so many ways. He uh, is. I mean, he was conflicted with with a bunch of decisions. There's like. With the, when NBC uh, said we're going to go with this thing with Kona gets four more years and then Jay's going to leave, Rick went with it and I know Jay wasn't happy about it and yep. was was upset and I know that Dave um, with Ludwin um, was not thrilled about him and everything. Rick would always tell me he's like first of all and, and War I've heard Warren Littlefield basically say the same thing. I might have said this before is like. They will always say they will not say that 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 Dave show. They will not say that Jay's show was better or funnier. They will just say it was the right show to get. We, we got the ratings. Um, that's it, and that's how Rick. Was. But Rick did. Yeah, Rick did say though that I, mean, I love Dave Dave's show on NBC and just he's, no one's funnier. But there are definitely things that. I mean, Leno is clearly with within Helen p- politicking, going to the NBC affiliates and just doing everything. And there were definitely some things that um, Dave didn't do. And I get it. I want to. I mean, I totally get it. And I kind of, I, I kind of, you know, I think that's cool that Dave wouldn't do that. But like, I think that that's probably um, that probably did did hurt him in 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 the end. And Ray Rick was very much like that. Some of his stuff, like. With like I don't know some of the stuff that, that he would make fun with the network and stuff would maybe rub, rub people a little bit, but um, but Rick, there wasn't one thing that Rick never said uh, ne- never said that Dave wasn't a, a genius and stuff. Like he, I mean, he, yeah, everybody over there recognized Dave, um, the talent and just that that what that show was. But if you're a business person and you're you're it's numbers and stuff. Leno, that was his goal to be number one, and he succeeded wildly. That was well, he did. Uh, I, I, oh, by the way, like, and you've worked with him way, way, way more, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, but my conversation with Bill Carter is one of the most co- important conversations I've ever had from a personal uh-huh. standpoint. I loved it. Mm. I loved just being able to hang with him. Like, I was just so happy that I was able to to just hang with bill and 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 then throw out a couple of the things that have been percolating in my head for years and years and years and years one of them being what you're talking about here um you know i appreciate where mr leno comes from when he says okay i was number one when i came in i was number one when i went out or uh uh, you know and 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 um and and i appreciate that um that dialogue that he has okay fine but the glaring stuff that isn't being said is that there had never been a franchise that was able to take hold against the tonight show ever um that would even come close to to being able to live never mind even come close to compete even come close to taking some of that ad dollar and 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 dividing the audience and doing that sort of thing that's never ever ever happened yes number one okay fine but the late show with stephen colbert and the late late show uh, you know, which is going to turn into what it's going to turn into here, um, uh, you know, wouldn't exist, you know, in the Johnny Carson era, of course. And then, yeah, okay, you may be number one, but the fact that the fragmentation happened on your watch and there's obviously extenuating circumstances. So talking to yeah. Bill about that was amazing. That's good. I'm but glad it- you got to talk to him. Yeah, it, it's one of those things. If Dave wasn't beating Lionel for the first, whatever, two years or whatever, yep. And the power switch there, I don't think there would be much of a thing there um, and to write about. I mean, there there was and stuff, but certainly not no. um, how everything, uh, yeah, everything went down. But I'm glad you got to talk to him. Oh, man, me too. It was so great. And I, I want to ask you about, I want to talk about Bill in a second. Don just said something sure. really fun here. Because I've said other things like this in the past. Yeah. You, know, you don't see a ton of cult 
stuff happening for 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 Jay Leno. Don just said there's no Dons for Jay Leno, and that is so true. You know, you don't have a ton of. There might be. I. I there might be. I. Not that we know. Of. Not that we know. Of. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, there if there's a Dons uh, for Jay Leno. Here, come on over. We'll get you both on the show, and you guys can yeah. uh, do uh, do some. Yeah, I've never heard of, of of that. I mean, um, it was just a different show, and I mean, it's just that's what it is and stuff. But yeah, that's an interesting observation, Mister Giller. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I got to ask you about what you're. Yeah. Can you talk about what you're working on right now? Is it the uh, the HBO thing? Is it the? Can you talk about what? No, I'm just working on um just a Carson related thing. I can't talk about. You can't just, talk about um, it. Okay, fair enough. Doing lots of research and talking to people I never got to talk to, as well, Good. and uh, making lots of discoveries. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, it's one of those things where it seems like just because I'm still doing such a deep dive and stuff. Like every seems like every couple of weeks or month, I make a, a discovery that I'm just like. About Carson's Tonight Show stuff that went on backstage, I'm like, I can't believe I didn't know this, and the public <laughs> has no idea. And it's stuff. That, it, a lot of it's very pivotal to um, the story of uh, of the Tonight Show and him. So it's it's doing um, just talking to people that I never got to talk to that maybe are more comfortable um, just being on the phone and not doing a podcast episode. Um, yeah, and just yeah, just listening. This delights me. Uh, of course, one of the questions I was going to ask, and and I kind of aborted it right at yeah. the beginning because you started talking about this. Is this like how if you miss if you miss it, um, you know, because you're you're what seven months out now from your last episode that you've. Done I don't remember, like but my quality of life has shot up through the roof. I can't tell you for eight years. I I am so grateful I got the chance. The people listen. I loved it, but it's just like it was so hard to get guests near the end, and it was just like. We, we would really go over the top with making our guests look good. Like we would take like yeah. ums and ahs uh, 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 a lot and just like heavy, more heavy um, post-production than I think a lot of it. And it was just like, it just got to be so much. Yeah. And that I, it just got to be too much and it was taken away from so from everything so i don't remember when it'll be a year i thought it would be may or june when it would be yeah a year. it's something like that it's it's, it's coming up i think it's i think I, it's been 10 months yeah. since the the spade episode or the, the it, carby episode came out do you want to say frank santa padre at the gilbert godfrey podcast same thing we talk on the phone he's like oh it's a different world like it's like so um yeah just more relaxing and tranquil and stuff i mean i i love having the conversations like this is great it's just yeah. everything else that um, people don't know about, nor should, should they. They should just enjoy the final product. But yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. They don't want to know that the sausage gets made. But 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 at the end of the day, um, you know, you'd probably miss it. I would I would I would submit that you probably would miss it a lot more if you weren't doing your current project. It sounds like your current project has gotten you to dig into the what you love and what yeah, you know you're probably right. But I definitely thought like by the end of the podcast that I got all my questions answered, and I I probably did at the time but there's just so many more now questions from just de digging um deeper and talking to more people that uh yeah and there are definitely a few more people I, I would like to talk I always kind of mentioned that maybe I'll do a bonus episode here and there maybe yeah. I'll there are a bunch of people on my list just maybe like 15 minutes or something I it's just putting the, the, my, my recording uh, equipment back on is just like so <laughs> triggering <laughs> and like it's just I don't know I'll, when I put the stuff on and I'm doing it the headphones on I'm just like in my head I'm like this is gonna be like an old it's gonna be I don't know like it just it brings me back to just taking over my life for days out of the weeks and stuff but yeah we'll see um I, uh, I, I'm glad, oh, I'm glad you still get to scratch the itch though. I'm still, I'm glad that you're, you're still doing something that's different. Uh, I'm certainly glad that your quality of life has shot up. That makes me, uh, uh, very yeah. happy. The first time you came on our show, you would, you were just, I don't, I know you had shot with Commissar. I don't, I don't think you had shot with Carvey at that. I think you're right. No, I think I that think, that was, that was about it. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that's was, where it was, so. Yeah, Robert Smigel was so nice to get Dick. Carvey does not like doing those things unless, like, he knows the person and is yeah. comfortable. And, or if it's, like, completely necessary, he's plugging something. And it's but he's so good at it. Fly on the wall is so he good. Is. He is. He, that's great. And it's his friends, and he's getting paid, yes. I, I'm guessing, very handsomely, um, I would think so, for the show and stuff. And, like, but 
How do you get on that boat, right? How do you get on the the, the very <laughs> paid very handsomely boat? I think you go on Saturday Night Live for six and a half whatever yeah. years and do a couple, do a two hundred million dollar film and all that stuff. But um, no, it was great. But like, it's like I could tell when I was talking to him, and I'm sure I, I would think that the guest with, that you talked is the same way. I was asking Dana stuff. He, he never gets to talk about stuff that he's like, I can't. Whoa, and he did tell me i don't know if it was true or not but i had my feeling was and robert said that like yeah he really liked talking to me but but, uh-huh. but like, so many podcasts are ubiquitous so many ask the same questions to yeah. public figures and it's like i i get it it's like why would you want to do that like when you've answered it so many times and they just don't have original uh questions or ideas or anything based on like Somebody just like interviewers just going like on a Wikipedia and taking like th- the four biggest things and just hammering it over and over again with them. Exactly. Well, Martin, yeah. Jeff Martin talked about that when he came on because, uh, you know, he would talk about where reporters would call him up and they'd ask him one question or two. It's the same question every time. And and the reason he came on our show and we went three hours like that's amazing because he got yeah. a chance to delve into this stuff yeah. and there's no better feeling like we don't, you know, we make tongue in cheek jokes about the paid handsomely part, whatever. Okay. But I would, I, I love it so much. I would give up that opportunity so I could have this deep relationship. So when yeah, Jeff yeah. Altman calls me, yeah. he leaves a voicemail in one of his crazy voices and does yeah, the, he does like, Carson are, are you kidding? like, really? Like uh, yeah. there's no feeling like that. Having this yeah. connection with mm-hmm. these people that we admire so much. Yeah. It's the one of the greatest things ever. And it sounds like yeah. you're still getting it, which is good. People have been nice. I think hopefully my work, the work I've done speaks for itself in terms of like people um, put in their trust in me. And I don't know, just trying to uh, um, just do stuff that that, I, that interests me, trying to do stuff I'm curious about and that means something to me. Um, which all of the, what you're doing is what I did with the Carson podcast. I just didn't expect um, yeah. any of what came out of it. But um but yeah, I still have the same, same thing. I have a bunch of, I, my problem is, is like, I just have too many ideas of stuff I want to do. Yep. I'm I, I'm fortunate just because I guess I've been doing this for so long, just that, that I can get a notebook and fill the thing and have, I'm like, and like 95 to 97% of the stuff I, that will come out as, as bad or I wouldn't use, but just like, I just have, like if I had an, an, a bulletin board with like, I'd have, I'd have endless um um three by five cards it probably needs it need to be like a giant wall of everything i want to do and stuff so it's basically just go i'm um, doing what i'm like out of all of them trying to narrow stuff down that i'm but I, it's like it's for me though that thing just um stuff i want to do and stuff i'm curious about is pretty endless i have to say well the curiosity i think is 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 something that also bonds everybody and you throw dave into this as well um actually shecky told me this one of the reasons he loves my next guest and some of the things dave is doing um up to this point is 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 and i think one of the reasons why i love dave so much is he's curious and i have oh, that, he always was yeah yeah curiosity it leads to so many great things like you say it also leads to dud things too but the the act or the art of it yeah. of being able to kind of be inspired by something and, and and go down these paths and learn these things curiosity is such a beautiful beautiful yeah thing. dave i always admired more uh, he would do it more on the nbc show but have these people that were th- never going to get ratings and stuff but have these yep. people he was just curious that to have on and ask the questions he wanted to and um but yeah, like a lot, most late night shows, a host would, ne- would never do that. But he he would just bring some of these people on that um, the competition, which is just like every rating point mattered. And um, it was, you know, it's different and stuff now. It was different then. But um, yeah, Dave would, um, yeah, Dave would, would do that. So I, I, I can relate to you about the ideas thing. Um, like I keep um you know walter at, at pants is so uh, he's so generous to me because he allows me to just message him and i and i try oh, that's very great hard yeah not. walter's a wonderful person yeah. oh i love him i love him he's I so would great agree. candy and i came out to new york uh in the fall and and he took us out for lunch and and we, we oh wow you know, got on the same page about everything yeah, and all. yeah i could say that david letterman took me out for lunch because he you know he put it on, um <laughs> he put it on the company card uh but one of the things that i keep i keep pitching him ideas about things like i yeah. i i just 
my mind keeps going about like I would love to see a reunion show of some sort, like at Radio mm-hmm. City or something like that, where even if Dave mm-hmm. wasn't the head of the show, but mm-hmm. it was like like Sandler showing up and singing a song or somebody coming up and doing a, you know, Altman coming up yeah. doing some close up magic or something. You know what I mean? Like, I just love the yeah. idea. Of reunion show I hear what you're, what you're saying. I mean, they've mentioned, they almost did that beacon thing with Darling in Love, like a Christmas. The Christmas. Yes, exactly. They almost did that, which would have been fun. I mean, yep. really expensive and they, but just the fact that they would even consider such a thing. And now yeah, that well, you, you get Netflix to pay the bill. It. Get Netflix yeah. to pay the bill for the production yeah, of the whole thing. They can chop true. it up into that's three episodes true. or something like that, and there you go. That's funny, that's right? So funny, yeah. It but was. Um, they keep coming. Well, they just keep coming. Yeah. I have ideas for Bill Carter. Bill Carter was on, and yeah. and one of the things that he said was, he goes, "Well, my contract with CNN expires in a few months, and then I'm just gonna put my shingle out there, and I don't know what I'm gonna do." And I'm like, "Oh my God, there's a there's a weekly show right there, like you just talking about the happening. yeah." I mean, Bill did. I don't know how many shows he did with me. Um, he did. Uh, Carter went on the podcast a lot, at least four times, to- three or four. I think times it was something sure. like was, that, and just yeah. like the listeners had so many, so many questions for him, yeah. and it was uh. Yeah, it was really great uh, just to pick his brain and stuff. And I th- that he definitely, um, in terms of like being there in the war room with all that stuff and sitting down with the power players that just would just open up like they've yep. never really opened up about that stuff to him. Um, yeah, it's interesting. That's that trust that you were talking about at the beginning of the show. You know, um, you know, Bill has that in spades with to the point where you know writes a book i i said this to him too or writes mm-hmm. the, the writes a book about it including all of the glaring mistakes that the nbc executives made mm-hmm. he had so much clout and trust with these people that the next regime of nbc executives who made even bigger mistakes opened up just as much to him <laughs> as like that's astounding to me and to me yeah. it's a throwback to um to what journalism should be uh, and what uh-huh. quality journalism should be that, that, yeah. that people aren't afraid of journalists. I think so. Fairly yeah, Bill, Bill definitely did justice to the, to the thing. And it's one of those things where I think a lot of those people are smart and know that they're going to be written about it and want their version of what happened. Yeah. Um, because a lot of times people's different, have different versions of, of what happened, which are, I don't know. Sometimes people believe it. Sometimes people, um, exaggerate or whatever, but, um, yeah, I think people were smart to just to, to be able to at least yeah contribute and be like this. This was true. This wasn't true. This didn't happen or happen like this. But um, yeah, I thought um, yeah, that when that his book came out, I was one of the I, I, like I just nabbed that book um when it came out, the first one. It was yeah. just such a, a fascinating read, and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, I haven't picked it up in a long, long time, but um, oh, they're yeah, they're both. They're both yeah. worth reading again and again, and, and and it's fun to watch, especially looking at what's going on with Late Night right now. Yeah. Um, you know, because he started talking about the fragmentation in the first book. Um, you know. Oh, book, it was, was yeah. It was, know. I mean, yeah, and now it's just like, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's, it's never going to go back to even close to what it is. I mean, um, I think that they were definitely fortunate um, when Dave was on and, and and Jay that that Spike Ferris and that Fox didn't give him a a, a nightly show. The Spike Ferris, in in my opinion, would still be on. Yep. Um, to me personally, that guy was so likable for having no experience. He gets on camera and he was good out of the gate. Yep. Um, he had all these like famous people that he was friends with that could come on. It was just a really funny show. Yep. And um, they did it on Fox. They did a bunch of Sundays and they canceled, I don't know, 13 episodes. But yep. he he's one of those people Fox did. And it's very hard to clear all the affiliates that I think would have that fragmentation. It would have been a little bit more if he was uh, if he was there on uh, doing the Fox thing. And yeah, I can't say enough about um, that. I can't believe that nobody gave him like on other networks being like, we want you to host. Yeah. A show or try something like this but um the likability is so important but, but, but to somebody that's out of the gate that can do that thing yeah the skill set so many comedians could never even do one show no nope. um and be good at that thing versus like um hosting uh, like a thing for like i don't know even doing a week um 
Shanlin, you know, even said Gary Shanlin said when he when he was guest hosting for Johnny, like one of the, the I think it was like especially the first time he did it, he didn't realize how exhausting it was. I mean, he was said by the end when he hosted. I've heard other people just like like it's like the point where it's just all his energy it was gone, yep. no energy, and the, people people I don't think the public realizes that. Um, and I think Spike could have could have done that and. Um, I could have made that happen but yeah that those those shows the daily shows are definitely what dave went through made it look easy and the public had no idea going on night after night like that yeah it's, it's the hardest it's one of the hardest jobs in show business and very few people skill set that could actually do it here dave was definitely i mean he was like michael jordan definitely oh abs absolutely yeah. and shout out to spike by the way i mean you know spike okay well he went out and did his uh you know he's he, he uh has been successful and so he's able to go out and do the the garage and the podcast and it's very oh, he's doing very, a million very, things with very stuff with good gary is working on he's yep. he's fine i just yeah that but his show his his show online like his 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 uh his podcast is is, is brilliant and it shows yeah, i've listened like, to a bunch of stuff that like if people i mean definitely he said stuff that like um if the media would have listened, would have picked stuff up and reported and stuff. He definitely is very candid yep. um, with a lot of his stuff. And I've definitely learned uh, a lot. I, I um, definitely admire his work. And uh, yeah, the fact that he was, yeah, got to work, work for Dave on both shows. Yeah. yeah. He's on my list. Um, you know, we talked about a couple of writers already. Uh, my day today started at uh, just, uh, just after 6 a.m. my time yeah. uh -huh. um, talking to Scott Ryan uh oh yeah the last sure. days of letterman and and yeah. i told him you know so he he's got a guy who uh he wants me to have on on uh, or thinks is a good idea that i have on here and i think it's a great idea too guy wrote yeah. monologue for dave for a long time and uh is it um, Gabe? Is it Gabe Abelson? No, I've had Gabe on the show. I love oh, Gabe. Great. Gabe is such a oh god. Gabe, Gabe is, a is great. Um yeah. Yeah, you don't have to tell me who, but keep keep going. I'll tell you. I'll tell you off. It's a, a fact. A, a faxer. Uh, it's a, it's one of the faxers. Um, uh, oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that so, happened today, but yeah. Yeah. So 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 um, so we were just going back and forth, and and I said, uh, you know, and and Scott and I are, are friends too, right? We just we we were cut from the same cloth as well. I love Scott. Yeah. And so I said, oh, by the way, I'm about to have. I, I got to go here soon. I gotta. I'm I'm about to have Mark on, yeah. and he mm -hmm. just. Oh, he just unloaded like a fire hose. Oh, I love Mark so much. He's oh, so that's great. very nice. The biggest spike he ever got with uh, Last Days of Letterman uh, yeah. was when he was on your show. So it, that's um, very nice to hear. I've yeah, it, it's I never expect stuff like that, but like um, James Commissar, who I admire so much, his persistence oh, yeah. and what he's like gone through to get these pieces, told me yep. on the on the podcast was more. He got heard from more people and more like just people talking about it than when he did like like I'm not gonna say it but did like national print like a magazine that was like huge yep. stuff but he heard and that's really nice to hear I mean it's oh. um, I'm glad uh, yeah it's um definitely what a labor of love to for him to write that book for um yeah Scott to write that book I'm glad the he did great, celebrate it in my it's for me it's that six weeks was um it was the greatest television moment for me just personally yeah ever i mean i remember my favorite team won the stanley cup i remember like i remember a yeah. lot of very uh pivotal tv moments yeah. um but for me that that six weeks if there is a golden age of television for me it was the final six weeks they were really excited and it was like watching the montage it was just like am i ever gonna see this guy again and it was yeah. so emotional the whole thing and uh he's a pro i i, I mean I know he is able emotionally to deal with things. I, I, I pretty sure like beforehand, but just that he was not, he, so many people would just be like, even Carson, like on the verge of tears and he, the way yeah. he was able, I don't think I could have gotten through something like that without just bawling. And the Dave, Dave as a broadcaster can, can do that. I'm sure he had the emotion stuff that he dealt with before, um, maybe even weeks before and stuff. But um yeah, the way he was able to even like talk about George Miller, his friends that passed, and be able to keep his composure and really talk about them eloquently. I couldn't do that. Absolutely. And yeah. like bring up references. Oh, the rats, by the way, they were they 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 were stoop shouldered or or whatever the line was, like like pulling in old lines from old timey things and, and yeah, and, it's great. I mean the guy yeah. the guy always would do stuff that would make him Shantlin was the same way when he would host um for for Carson. 
he would they would do stuff both of them that not that that certain things little things that that, that most of the audience would not get yeah um, yeah yeah i just um i appreciate you so so much uh oh, thanks. as we kind of start to wrap here yeah. um was there okay first off was there anything else today that you had thought yeah i want to talk about i want to throw out there uh, um second, I what else are you working so. on i i i was like when you asked me to come on i'm like I don't know what I'm possibly going to talk about. I didn't, didn't. And yet 90 minutes, no problem. But that's like so many of the guests that come on, have come on with me. They're like, I don't know what. And then, no, you're, it's a, tra it's a testament to you and you hosting oh. this to get this stuff out. So no, I'm glad to do this. And it's like, I, I think it's just so many other people. Like you're talking about like the recording for three hours with yeah. those writers. It's like, yeah. it, it, I, I never get to talk to, almost never get to talk about, um, one of the, like my favorite shows of all time like this and like go inside baseball on it yep. and stuff. And that's, I think that's the reason they do too. It's like, it's, it, it just was one of the most special times in so many people's lives, people that work there, people that didn't work there. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely just to hear um, anything that I didn't know previously is just that you're doing a great service. Oh, I well, Coming from you, like I, I'm, I'm, yeah. Again, you talk about the emotion welling up coming from you. That makes me almost uh, like want to just oh. right now. So thank you, thank you for saying that. Um, you are uh, a massive, massive influence to me. I'm grateful that I can call you a buddy. I can message you anytime yeah. I want. I can get advice. Please. I can get. Thank you so much for everything that you have done to contribute to. Um, you know, the Carson Podcast is an amazing body of work. Thank you. I'm so happy that you have, um, you know, sprung boarded into the, you know, this being part of the CNN project, whatever it is that you're part that of. That was very you know. nice. They brought me in and it was, uh, um, yeah, it was interesting working with Bill and yeah, I enjoyed a lot of that. Well, um, you know, the adage of course is more to come. My, my, my hope is that you and I can take that phrase right now and, and expound on it in so many ways that there is more to come you on this show. Of course, oh, that's, that's my yeah. selfishly thinking that, but more to come for you with this stuff. Thank you very and, much and for saying right back at you. Oh, thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate you. Um, oh, let's do the commercial first. Let's do the commercial because I, I, there is one last thing I want to talk about. The Letterman Podcast has one sponsor, one sponsor only, and that is Rupert G and the Hello Deli. Um, Rupert, uh, go to hello dash deli. Now, hey, place is up for sale, everybody. Go to hello dash deli.com if you want to get licensed late show with David Letterman merchandise. It's the only place to get it. Uh, the you need broke your mug, go get one. Um, because at some point we don't know what it's going to look like, uh, what that uh, opportunity is going to look like when this place closes. Uh, Mark Rupert recently announced that he's selling the he's selling the joint. I heard. You know, what nothing. Do you, what, what do you think about that? What was your reaction? Nothing. Nothing lasts forever, but it's no. like what an amazing run and how pivotal that guy was to uh, the show in terms of. Um, I mean, John Beckerman's thing that he came up with, with the Dave feeding Rupert lines and stuff to just, just making him such a staple of, of the show. I mean, he's um, such a nice guy. I mean, yeah. uh, Rupert, if you're listening, thank you. When I worked for the show on my birthday, you gave me a free meal. It was like veal par parmesan or something. You're like, it's your birthday. No charge. I'm like, it's my birthday tomorrow. <laughs> but um yeah they were great and just it was always fun just to um when i worked there and did it that just this, this guy this hardworking, nice man is getting people just want photos and him signing and stuff it was like that at knl it was like K N L or kns with Ru M muji burr and sierra jewel yeah people just yep. going over they were rock stars for a while and then yeah it's a shame <laughs> that everything closes after a while but yeah but rupert uh it's it's just a huge accomplishment yeah. that he, he's lasted all these years and stuff and i hope uh that um i hope uh the late show the current late show does something and maybe mentions him or something could um, not agree more uh yeah. don giller just chimed in rupert always charged me double that's the way it should be don's absolutely that's right <laughs> That's right. Uh, Mark, I love you, brother. I love you so much. Yeah, it's so good seeing you. I'm glad we got to do this. Thanks for asking and making it easy on me. Because okay. I just, I'm like, what am I possibly going to talk about? So yeah, I'm glad we got to do this. It was fun. Well, we're hitting our anniversary, uh, guaranteed around anniversary time every year, uh, we're going to have you on. But of course, it's going to be more than that because, and as projects get announced and are allowed to be promoted oh, yeah. and things like that, 
this vehicle will be one. Um, hopefully it gets bigger and stronger and faster, but we will promote whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing. Yeah, I really Malcolm, appreciate that. I love you, brother. Yeah. Thank you so much. Love to you back. And I'm definitely looking forward to, to talking sometime soon. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Okay. So wasn't that fun? That was like, uh, I, I, man, it's so cool getting together with these like-minded folks. Um, and, and, and I just, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am for Mark. <laughs> um, just the fact that, uh, um, that he didn't really know that he inspired me the way that he did through Rick Sheckman and, and, and that I I'm glad that I got a chance to tell him that that's cool. I hope that, uh, it translates to a, an entertaining episode. I, I know all the other stuff. I mean, Mark is just, um, he's an encyclopedia out there as well. And, and those of us that want to take these stories and take this, um, all of this, this, this form of entertainment and pass it on to others, uh, give some insights and entertain uh, and give some insight edutainment. Uh, maybe not, maybe not edutainment. I don't know, but I'm very excited now. Once again, don't forget to join the, the Letterman podcast, Facebook group for a chance to win and, and get into the contest for a chance to win a David Letterman rejection, uh, postcard. Um, yeah, I'm just really, really grateful. Uh, obviously, with the anniversary coming and the prep for it and all that stuff, there's been a lot of reflection. I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful uh, to be part of this, um, this part of 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 entertainment, the of entertainment mythos, I guess. And and uh, I hope this is a contribution that people uh, will appreciate. I certainly appreciate uh, the folks who have reached out and talked about it. Um, and a special shout out to, uh, and happy anniversary and, and a special thanks to, um, those who worked for Dave, uh, who have either been on the show or haven't been on the show, but have reached out and tell me that they watch the show or listen to the show. There's quite a few who do, and, and that's extremely gratifying, um, to say the least it is, it is, uh, but a token of, of what I can give back to, um, all of these people, whether they worked there for six months as a as an intern, all the way up to, you know, the entire run, um, if I can give a little bit of insight or or, or entertainment back to uh, those who spent so much time and effort uh, developing, you know, this odd brain that I have, you know, it's worth it right there. Um, yeah. So as we say, more to come. That is another episode of the Letterman podcast with Mike Chisholm. Coincidentally, I am Mike Chisholm. Thank you and good night. Overcoat and underpants. <laughs>